Welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. This is a daily podcast that's going through the key chapters of God's Word. If someone offered you priceless riches and all you had to do was follow them, would you take them up on their offer? Well, in today's study in Proverbs chapter 3, the Lord is offering us His priceless riches if we'll just learn to follow Him and walk in His ways. Now, yesterday we began studying the book of Proverbs and we discussed in our introduction that these Proverbs have been given to us so that we can learn the skill of wise living. Ultimately, this whole book is to help us walk with the Lord and obey Him. In fact, really, the message of the Bible is, among other things, how to obey God. And the Bible presents different perspectives on what obedience means. For instance, from God's priest's perspective, he might teach that obedience is about being holy. Or God's prophets might teach that obedience is about being righteous. Here we're seeing that God's sage is telling us that obedience is wise. But basically, it's all the same point. God's people obey him, and when they do, they receive spiritual riches that are holy and righteous and wise. Yesterday, we saw that wisdom is like a path of safety. Today, it's like a treasure of riches. And so as we go to verse 1, verse 1 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. And then he tells us why in verse 2. He says, For length of days and years of life and peace will be added to us. Now, you might remember from yesterday that we explained that the book of Proverbs is really just a collection of gnomic literature. Gnomic literature contains instructions for how things go. And here we're seeing in verse 1 that wise living adds to the length of our days. Now, that's generally true because wise living walks with God and walking with God will keep us away from the paths that lead to self-destruction. And so just a length of days. Well, going on to verse 3, verse 3 tells us that wisdom is like beautiful jewels that we should carry around with us always. It describes these jewels as kindness and truth. Now, a kind life is one where we are living a life to benefit others, just caring about others and thinking of what would be best for them. A true life is where our words are accurate and true, reliable. Where about God's truth, we speak in truth. Now, just think about this world and think about how different things would be if everyone would just walk according to the principles of kindness and truth. If everything we did, we just examined through the lens of, is this kind? Is this true? If we live by these principles, we would find the blessings of verse 4, where we would find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. I mean, God is pleased with kindness and truthfulness. Then by and large, so is mankind as well. And what a great promise for those who would pursue these riches and walk in God's ways. Well, going on to verses 5 and 6, these are famous verses that are just such great truths for us to live by. We should just memorize these verses and live them in our life. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. That could be just an entire sermon right there. This is such a key to wise living. Wise living is learning to trust the Lord and lean on Him. Again, all this is instruction from God. We need to learn to trust this instruction. When you lean on something, you're putting your weight on it. You're letting it support you. And Solomon is comparing our trust to leaning upon God. He is telling us that we need to trust the Lord, lean on him, rely upon him, learn what he is saying, and actually lean on these things, trust in these things, and do them. And he says, do this with all of our heart. A wholehearted trust in the Lord means not to divide our mind about him, not to maybe think, well, I'll just do it God's ways for a little bit and the world's ways, whichever is better today or tomorrow. Solomon is calling us to just be wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord, doing what is wise and best and right according to God's word and not anything else that anyone else would be telling us. And as we give ourselves over to the Lord and follow his ways, he will make our paths straight. Now, here's the thing. There will be times when our own understanding will get in the way. We think that, well, we're wiser than God, that we'll just take this shortcut and things will work out better if we do it our way. Well, in that case there, we're leaning on our own understanding or we're doing what you see in verse 7 warning here that we're becoming wise in our own eyes. That's not the path of wise living. The path of wise living is to specifically go back to God and acknowledge him. Acknowledging him is not like just kind of tipping our hat saying, hey there, we recognize you're there. No, it means to go back to him and seek to order our life by his instructions, by his wise counsel. And as we seek to walk his paths, he will make our paths straight. Now, the biblical idea of a straight path here is this idea where the path is is not crooked, it's not twisted, it's a righteous path. It's according to God's design. It's a smooth path and a straight path. It doesn't mean there won't be challenges, 
but it is still a straight path as leading us directly to the Lord. Well, as we go on in chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 now shift completely. Remember we said this yesterday, that you're just going to have a collection of ideas here. Sometimes they don't necessarily fit in their context. And here now we go to verses 9 and 10, and it's shifting our focus to just being faithful with our finances. Verse 9 says, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all you produce. And so here we're saying that it is possible to honor the Lord with our wealth. To honor him means to recognize that all we have is from the Lord. We're just recognizing that everything we've received is ultimately from God. And we're just showing God this honor by being faithful with our giving to the Lord's work, either it's in our church family or just being generous to those around us. This just honors him. In fact, verse 9 reminds us to give God our first fruits, not our leftovers. And this principle is true, whether it's financial or any of our service to God. We're not to give God our leftover offerings. We are to give God our first fruits, that which is first and freshest from our very being. And so we are to honor God in this way, and we'll just see his blessings here in verse 10. Well, going on to verse 11 and 12, it also tells us now to not reject God's discipline because God loves those whom he corrects. Now, this probably sounds familiar because Hebrews 12 also cites this passage here. The word discipline here also speaks of instruction. And when God steps into our life to teach us something, we should listen. We should let him instruct us. And rather than being angry, we should rejoice that God, our Father, is aligning our life with his path of wisdom. And he's doing this because he loves us. Why would we not receive this? Why would we not want his blessing and his guidance and his discipline in our life? To do so just draws us closer to him. And that's just great riches because we'll be walking closer to the Lord. Well, the next set of verses, verses 13 to 24, once again extol the wisdom of wise living. Proverbs 3, verse 13 says, How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Why? Let's just go through these verses quickly here. Why? Because her profit is better than the profit of silver and gold, verse 14. She is more precious than jewels, verses 15 and 16. She yields a long life, verse 16. Her ways are pleasant and her path is peace, verse 17. She is like a tree of life, in verse 18. And so clearly, God is promising all kinds of spiritual riches if we simply follow his ways of wisdom. Going on to verses 19 and 20, these verses talk about how God used wisdom to design creation. And then we see this fact borne out every day as new scientific discoveries show us how amazingly complex and glorious and beautiful and intricate creation is. We can just see God's design behind everything. And the point is that just as God has used his wisdom to design creation, He has also given us his wisdom to instruct us how to live. And so obviously we should follow him. I mean, he is vastly, infinitely wiser beyond anything we have. And so in verse 21, we should not let the gems of his wisdom vanish from our sight. We should pursue sound wisdom and discretion and keep them like jewels around our neck so that we will walk securely in verse 21 and sleep soundly in verse 24 and not run off in fear with every new surprise. You see that in verse 25 because in verse 26, The Lord will be our confidence and he'll keep us from stumbling. Those are just great spiritual riches that God gives to those who are pursuing righteous and wise living. And finally, the last set of verses gives us a series of principles that tell us things like don't withhold good in verses 27 and 28. Uh, Don't seek to harm our neighbor in verse 29. Don't condemn with a man without cause in verse 30. Don't envy a man of violence, verse 31. And then verse 32 and 33 tell us why. Because that person would be an abomination to the Lord and his curse is upon their house. And instead, verse 34, God gives grace to the afflicted and honor to the wise. Again, such great riches. Well, that's just a quick summary of chapter 3. As I mentioned yesterday, if we go too fast through these chapters, we're going to really have a hard time just kind of applying these Proverbs for life because we're going to find if we just slow down and think about them, These are truly glorious riches of truth that God gives to us. And so as we finish on up, rather than just closing the Bible and moving on, how about you go back over this chapter and look for one of the core principles that you can meditate upon and just really just be thinking about. Uh, Maybe it's trusting the Lord, or maybe it's being faithful with your finances or submitting to his discipline or being good and kind or not withholding good that is due. Why don't you go ahead and pick a proverb from this chapter, a principle from this chapter, and then just meditate upon it and think about it from every angle you can. Ask yourself questions like, how would this principle be rooted in God's character? How does it come from his character and his ways? Uh, What does it look like to obey this proverb? What's it look like to disobey it? Why would someone disobey it? If a person is disobeying it, how do we get back onto the path of obedience? And how would our own life have to change if we were to be fully living out that principle? 
And then, since every spiritual principle requires God's grace to actually live it, let's end our time today just asking the Lord to give us the grace and wisdom and guidance to bring our life into conformity to His ways that we might walk with Him. Well, with that, may the Lord bless your time meditating upon these spiritual riches of this chapter here. Thanks for listening, and God bless.